I was an Army brat, and I was born at Fort Belvoir, Virginia, and didn't live there very long, and started moving around with Dad and Mom and the family as he pursued a 31-year career in the military. In my junior year in college, after the Vietnam War, they were trying to recruit women into the Army. And if you're accepted in this program, you got $500 a month through your senior year in college with a two-year commitment and a commission as a second lieutenant. That was a lot of money back then. <laughs> and it was actually an offer too good to refuse. So I really joined for the money. And I knew in my heart that it was just gonna be a two-year detour in route to my coaching career. And I remember telling my dad after my two-year stint was up that I really enjoyed being a soldier and I really enjoyed leading soldiers. And I think I'm gonna hang around as long as I enjoy it and as long as I can make a difference. The two years turned into five years, turned into 10 years, turned into 38 years. Shortly after we joined, they disestablished the Women's Army Corps and we began, this cohort of women began the integration of women into the regular army. And that was exciting. And I think that also piqued my interest in staying beyond my two years. I got to go to Jump Master School. It's one of the toughest schools I ever had ever been to. And a great leadership, great course. I got to go to an 82nd Airborne Division. I had never been in a division before. And to be a Jump Master and a rigger and a paratrooper, to be assigned at 82nd was just a, another dream come true. It was a struggle to get in because they still want, the, you know, what are we going to do with you, a female, in the 82nd? That was the only field grade at the time. And so getting in and establishing yourself was something you just had to do. Logistics is really tough business. And what I wanted to do as a logistician is make sure that the warfighters had what they needed, when they needed, and they didn't need to worry about logistics. When you think about Afghanistan, a landlocked country, and this is a country about the size of Texas with 18,000 foot mountains, about 2% of the roads are paved, Many of the outposts are resupplied by mule and airdrop. And we've been there almost 15 years, and they've never gone without fuel, bullets, fuel. I think we always have to remember who our customer is, and that is the warfighter. And you have to answer, know what their needs are, and be in contact with them. What I try to do is put the human face on leadership. We're not perfect, we are humans, and we're not invincible. And a lot of times, uh, we're afraid to talk about those things because it might be seen as a sign of weakness. But we all make mistakes, and I hope we may learn from our mistakes and make them going in the right direction. The numbers of letters and cards and emails that came flooding in, duffel bags full uh, from daughters and sons and moms and dads and veterans and soldiers I'd work with, saying, how happy they were and now they could tell their daughter that they could be anything they really wanted to be to include a four-star general in the army. And you go, wow, <laughs> and from people around the world, it's been a wonderful journey. I wouldn't trade a day.